everybody, welcome to Board Online, Board Offline. Today I'm bringing you a preview of a game called Ritual, which is currently funding on Kickstarter. Now I've already done a how to play video for this, and you can go and watch that if you'd like to get some real specific ideas as far as how the rules work. Uh, today I will show you uh, briefly just kind of a general idea of the rules, but this video is going to be more about my uh, personal thoughts on the game and, and give you a better idea of, of where I think this game could go and, and all that sort of thing. So before I tell you too much more about that, let's get down to the board and take a look at um, kind of how Ritual plays. Okay, so here's just a general example of, of how a game might have played out to you know a certain point in the game. Um, and I didn't actually play it out this way, I just kind of set these tiles out. So it's possible, theoretically, that it would be impossible for this to happen this way, but this is just for demonstration purposes. So uh, this is for two, two players right here is what we've got, and the game does play two to five players, but we've got the red player and the green player, and where you see these cubes, those are influence cubes, and you can have multiple players have influence over the same tile, um, and each player can have up to one cube on a tile. And over here, you've got what's called the ley line, and these are all the, the tiles that are currently available to you to put out. Whenever it's a player's turn, they, they choose from one of these five tiles, and, and these tiles will be cycled. You've got a, a bag full of tiles here, and so these tiles will be cycled uh, to the board, and then more tiles will be cycled out, and so it's constantly changing what's going to be available over here. Also, real quick, um, over, over on this side of the board, you've got... Uh, the some some rules reminders basically you've got what here it, this right here is all of the uh, runes as far as when they activate what they do and I'll tell you more about the runes activate in a minute but I just that's good to have that right there on the board no need to be passing around a reference sheet or anything like that and then here we've got uh, the different steps of a turn and then some other little rules reminders as well so anyway on a player's turn they're going to choose. Uh, let's say it's the green player. They choose any tile they want, and they can put it any anywhere next to a tile that has one of their influences, uh, influence cubes. So keep in mind that that means it doesn't have to match up. So they could they could do like that, and that'd be fine. They could even do it this way, where this you know misaligned and everything too. And then when they put it out, they'll put their influence cube on it, and now they've got one more influence on the board. However. If instead, let's say the green player took this tile and put it right here, well, now they've completed a rune right here. You can see uh, the three pieces of this fire rune are completed. And so the green player actually is going to put an influence cube on each of the tiles that make up that rune. And except to, right here, I did that wrong. You can see here, there's already a green influence cube there. Never have more than one per tile. So actually take that one off. But in that case, you can see you spread your uh, influence faster. Now, why are you going to be wanting to... Well, you know what, real quick, before we go into the runes themselves, I actually kind of went to the end of a turn there. So let's, let's back up just a little bit. Placing tiles is the last thing you do in your turn. The first thing you do in your turn is activate a rune. And the way you do that, any rune that is completed, say this right here, this light blue is air rune. So you have air, uh, the brown is earth, the red is fire, the black, which I don't know if we, I don't think we have any completed black ones out here, but the black is void and the dark blue is water. So right here, we've got a completed air room. And if, if the green player wanted to activate the air room, they'd take three cubes off and bring it back, you know, into their supply. They'd pick any one of these tiles and toss it back into the bag and then use the ability of that rune. Now with an air rune, what that ability is, is they can then take their influence cube and place it anywhere on the board that doesn't already have one of their cubes. And so that could be, you know, on this space right here if they wanted to. And that would then mean they have placed it on a tile that is part of an entire another rune. And so they would get to place it there as well. But that a better play a better play would have been for them to place their green cube here because that tile is not only part of this rune, it's part of this fire rune as well. This earth rune is completed and the fire rune is completed. So then they could put cube there, there, and then a cube there. And we'll reach in the bag here and get another green cube. Oh, that's the wrong bag. That's a red cube, isn't it? All right. But you see what I'm saying? In this way, and if you could find one where 
you had three runes completed because you see there's this water rune piece here three runes completed then you could really spread out fast earth runes are completely different and the, and the way a earth rune works is if you activated an earth rune like this one right here you would actually take any tile you wanted from the ley line and place it anywhere you wanted to on the scroll and then you'd put your influence cube on there and if that completed a uh a, uh, a rune as well then you would put the influence cubes all over that rune just like you did before uh, and essentially what this does is gives you an additional chance to place out a tile on your turn um, if you chose to activate a fire rune fire runes are kind of cool so again uh, let's say the red player activates this fire rune they take off all their cubes they, they toss one of these in the bag and that, and that you're going to do with every time you activate a rune. doesn't matter what rune. Um, I might not do that every time when I'm showing you here. But every time you activate a rune, you remove three cubes from that rune of your color. And then toss any, uh, any tile from the ley line back in the bag. And then they uh, scorch a single tile. Now, the reason why in this case I'll be flipping all these over. So if they scorch this tile, then it's also part of this rune. And so it flips all of these over as well. And you can see that these are actually blank spaces right now. In the final product, there will be scorch marks on the back of these. And so now this cannot be used for anything. That once it's scorched, it is completely unusable in terms of being part of a rune. But there's an answer to that. And that's with the void. If the void rune is activated, then a player can place their influence cube on a scorched spot. And if that scorched spot is adjacent, immediately adjacent, to another scorched spot, then their influence cubes go there as well. And finally, with the water rune, uh, the water rune, if you activate that, then let's say this, you know, down here, activate the water rune, then you can replace, say, this tile right here, and not just scorch, you can replace any tile, but scorched tiles are included with something from the uh, ley line and put your influence cube on it as well. So that's how all those work. So the very first thing you do in your turn is activate a rune if you want to. You don't have to do that. Then you refresh the ley line, which means you're going to fill it back up. So right now we've got three empty spots here. And so you would actually put uh, three more tiles out from the bag randomly drawn. And then step three, place a tile. So that's when you would choose whichever one you wanted and put it wherever you want on the board, provided that you're putting it next to a tile with your color cube already on it. Now it is possible sometimes you might not be able to put a, uh, a, a tile out next to a tile with your influence cube on it already. And in that case, you then can place it anywhere you want to on the board. Okay, so some final thoughts on ritual and, and, and what I think about the game in general. Um, let's start with the rule book. Now I have to say that as far as uh, rule books go for a game that's not even you know, technically finished, they're still making adjustments. They're still, you know, uh, taking input from their uh, play testers and all that sort of thing. This rule book is very well put together, very clear. When I initially downloaded it, th this is the copy that came with the beta, or I'm sorry, with the prototype, but I, I downloaded the print and play, or uh, not print and play, I downloaded the rule book off, the, off their website, off their campaign from Kickstarter. And when I looked at it initially, the first thing I saw was 28 pages. Oh my goodness, that, that seems like a lot for what this game appears to be. And then I realized, wait a minute, it's 28 pages because they have these enormous um, diagrams and examples in the rule book that really make things very clear. Uh, I mean, it's, it's one of the easiest rule books to read that I've read in quite a while. And when I was putting together my how to play video, for this game, I believe I had only one, maybe two questions total for the entire game um, that I had to email the designers about. Uh, maybe just one question, actually. And as it turns out, that that question, the, the one that I can remember for sure, was more about me reading too much into uh, the rules as opposed to the rulebook not being clear enough. So I feel like the, the rulebook is really well done. And that, to me, says something about the designers that they've gone to all the trouble to create a, a, a really nicely laid out rule book. So the board, uh, it now, now first off, as far as thematically, this you know having the board on this, this is kind of a um, 
a mouse pad type material. And I don't know if this is how, you know, obviously everything is subject to change. I don't know exactly what it's going to end up being like, but it's kind of cool having a scroll on not a hard board, uh, regular, you know, a regular cardboard. So that, that's kind of cool. And then you've got the, uh, the ley line over here, which I think is another, um, a cool little, little piece of this whole puzzle here in that ultimately, you know, the, the tiles being drawn for the bag are random. However, at any given time, you've got five choices to choose from. So that pretty much makes sure that you've got some good choice, especially as the game gets farther and farther along and you have uh, your, your pieces spread out farther and your uh, influence cubes spread out more. You're going to have more choices. And if you're making wise decisions, uh, I believe that you'll end up with, uh, you know, a good choice, no matter what's available to you. Uh, obviously it's possible that smart play from your opponents could back you in the corner, that sort of thing. But it feels like there, there's some good, uh, a good availability of good choices. And, and what this game really comes down to is it's a combination of a uh, tile placement with area control. And uh, I think that it's it's got a, a very unique theme that, I mean, I, I suppose that, I, I don't know, I, I feel like the theme does come through in this, it, you know, that you're, you're these wizards that are working together to build this scroll and that, you know, I think it's a pretty cool theme. I, I like that. And then the air control aspect of it, you know, uh, the first time I read oh, you take three cubes off to put one cube somewhere else for, you know, when you're activating the air rune. So that doesn't seem like it'd be very useful because your cubes are your points at the end of the game. And then, oh, but if you, you know, put it on a rune that is part of multiple other runes, then you spread out onto all of those runes. Ah, okay, that makes sense. Onto oh, a tile that's part of multiple other runes. So then you can, ultimately, you could end up being a part that, you know, one tile can be part of three runes, so that would be take three tiles or three uh, cubes and turn that into seven, uh, seven cubes. So that's how you can start spreading your influence that way. I'm interested to see how this game will work with five people. I'm actually going to try to take this to my game group tomorrow night and see if I can get, you know, four or five people to play a game with me um, and, and try it out like that and see what it's like with that many people. Cause I would imagine the game could ramp up pretty quickly when you've got that many people in space would be, be at a premium very, very, uh, rapidly that way. One other aspect of the game that I think is a cool idea is, so you've got the fire runes that scorch portions of, of the scroll, right? And it, it could, it could have been that, you know, once that's scorched then that's done, you know, you're basically napalm in the area and you can't use it anymore. But they've actually put in a way that you can actually have influence over the scorched areas by activating the void runes. And on top of that, you can pull the rune off the board, or I'm sorry, pull the scorched area off the board and replace it with a fresh uh, tile piece with, you know, three pieces of a rune by using the water rune. And I, I thought that was pretty neat that, you know, there's always, there, there's always a reaction that's available for whatever has been done prior to your turn so it, that that's a more goes more into how i think that there's almost always something you can do to move in a positive direction on your turn so there you go that is my preview of ritual if this seems interesting to you go over and check it out over at their kickstarter which you can find in the description below the link for that uh, they have i believe at this point a little over two weeks left so be sure to, to check them out and see what's going on over there. I appreciate y'all bearing with me. I'm getting over a cold, so I apologize if I've been difficult to listen to at all. And if you like this uh, video, please give it a thumbs up. If you like my channel, please subscribe. And you can find me on Twitter at Board Offline. And until next time, if you're bored online, board offline. Yeah.